Okay, this lecture is 1,000 brains with cognitive impairment, memory loss, or dementia. One of the most common things I do is work as a neuroradiologist, and I see tons of brains, and the history very often is memory loss, cognitive impairment, dementia. And I've noticed a pattern in these patients. I actually study these patients rather closely, and I've been doing this for many years, since the 1990s I've been looking at brains. And if you gave me 1,000 brains with that history, what would I see? And I can tell you right off the get-go, about 900 of them will have diabetes, high blood pressure, coronary artery disease, at least one eye with cataract surgery, and they'll have poor dentition. These things all go together. And there'll be another 50, like 95% here, that'll have either diabetes or hypertension. And quite often, it just won't be listed in the history and physical that they also had the diabetes or also had the hypertension. Alzheimer's has been called type 3 diabetes, and that's a reasonable thing to call it. By the way, the whole word Alzheimer's is, in my opinion, kind of totally exaggerated because Alzheimer's is characterized by this focal temporal lobe atrophy out of proportion to other areas of the brain, but I almost never see that. Okay, Alzheimer's is kind of simple. Oh, Alzheimer's, just take this pill. No. And the vast majority of cognitive impairment, in my experience, I agree with the theory of Jack Delatory. It's primarily vascular. And it gets more complicated than that. We'd have to go into excitotoxicity and atherosclerosis, which we're not going to do in this lecture. But I just want to make the point. It is so common. I don't even need to look at the chart when I hear that history. I know about 95% of the time that patient's going to be hypertensive with coronary artery disease, diabetes, um, and probably have had a cataract or some other similar eye disease. They're all vascular, the old people, eye diseases, cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration, hypertensive retinopathy, diabetic retinopathy. Um, they usually will have poor dentition uh, that predisposes them to leaky gums as well as they probably have leaky gut perhaps, inflammation and everything that goes with that, a slight prothrombogenicity, increased tendency of the blood to clot. Most diabetics are hypertensive. Uh, a lot of hypertensive people eventually become diabetic. Hypertension is the most common cause of brain lesions. The most common thing we see are just little lesions um, near the center of the upper brain uh, called periventricular flare hyperintensity. That's the MRI term for high signal near the cerebral ventricles. And low blood pressure is worse than high blood pressure. You drop your pressure too low, you don't got enough blood supply going to the brain. So you got to be careful not to overtreat hypertension. I think Dr. McDougall's on the right track of not treating patients unless they've got pretty significant chronic refractory hypertension. He doesn't treat unless, what I heard him in his lecture, they're over 160 consistently measured at home. Okay, congestive heart failure, AFib, cardiac valve disease, those are all subsets of coronary artery disease. That's the most common reason people develop those problems. Hyperlipidemia, high blood lipids, is very useful, like high cholesterol in a middle-aged person. A lot of the older uh, persons, it's not as useful. Quite often, they've been treated with statins and other medications. Quite often, they're poor on Social Security and they're almost starving, but they still have a lot of medical problems. Um, I would also say the majority of the patients are overweight. Um, uh, a pretty high number have sleep apnea, probably a lot more that just aren't diagnosed yet. Um, decent number of cigarette smokers, about 200 out of 1,000. About 100 will be alcoholics with a pickled brain. You know, alcoholics get demented more often. That's another thing, too. People think being a doctor is like this glamorous job. No, you deal with a lot of really sick people who are very sad, okay? Uh, a lot of them are cognitively impaired. A lot of them are drug addicts. A lot of patients are alcoholics, uh, cigarette smokers, substance abusers. The reason is people with those type of behavior patterns, they get sick all the time versus the kind of people who watch these videos, you know, they're educated and they take good care of themselves. They don't get sick that often. So that's why, you know, when you go to a hospital, the people are sick and they've got really kind of sad, desperate situations. And most people don't get better from chronic disease. It's called chronic because they don't ever get better. Um, and the best chance most of them have for most things is to go low fat, low sodium vegan, but hardly anyone knows that. That's actually like rare to know that. Um, what else can we say? Oh, substance abusers, you know, Ayn Rand had a good quote, you know, drugs are for people with a flawed personal philosophy. If you've got something going on in your life, you're excited about it, you're enthusiastic to do something to achieve or to help someone, you don't want to be getting drunk or stoned and, you know, giving yourself brain damage. That's for people who are, you know, confused. 
or the, not a good philosophy of life. Okay, what about multi-infarct dementia, having a previous large stroke? You know, that's uncommon. We see it, but it's not that common. Okay, um, what else will I see? Traumatic brain injury. There's a lot of persons with traumatic brain injury. It's under-recognized how common traumatic brain injury is with soccer. I've seen uh, kids have to drop out of college for uh, brain injuries from hitting the ball at their head in soccer. A lot of other sports, people get uh, concussions and whatnot, like football, of course, boxing. And there's other sports, too. This MMA, I mean, if you're doing a version of MMA where you don't have head trauma, then it's a good exercise. But if you're getting head trauma, that's not good. You're, gonna, you're at risk for cognitive impairment. That's, uh, I think, pretty clear. Uh, motor vehicle crashes are very common cause of traumatic brain injury, and of course there's other ones. But Parkinson's disease, yeah, we'll see it, but it's not that often I see it as the cause of dementia. Huntington's chorea, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, those are really, really, really rare diseases. Um, women who had a hysterectomy before 35 years of age, they now no longer menstruate, so they take on the risk of a man. They're not able to give themselves that uh, phlebotomy every month, so to speak, to lower their hematocrit and lower their blood viscosity so they get more hypertensive. And if they're not careful about their risk factors, they're predisposed to a lot of vascular disease. I've seen a significant number of them hypertensive and having cognitive impairment in their 50s from that. Uh, what about treatable tumors? They're rare. I mean, once in a while we'll see a meningioma that's a benign brain tumor that can be resected and the patient's cognitive functional will improve. Meningiomas are a relatively common brain tumor, but it's uncommon to see a big one that's causing cognitive impairment. That is rare. It's even less than one out of a thousand. I put one to make the numbers work for a thousand, but it's less than one out of a thousand patients. Do I see that? Uh, treatable communicating hydrocephalus. Now there's different debates about how common communicating hydrocephalus is. It's also called normal pressure hydrocephalus MPH, but in terms of seeing a case where the patient actually really has it and really goes for surgery and really gets better, that is quite rare, okay? Um, subdural hematomas, they're undiagnosed and they get it drained and they get better. That's also rare. It happens, but it's rare. I'm putting those at about one out of a thousand of it in that ballpark. What about infections causing um, cognitive impairment? Usually infections are more of an acute process. They're also rare. Uh, it's uncommon for an infection to be a chronic cause of cognitive impairment. Yes, of course, it does happen, but uncommonly. Um, and you can have sequela, cognitive impairment as sequela of a previous infection, but then everybody knows they had the previous infection, okay? Um, other things, it used to be syphilis back in the 1800s, early 1900s was very common. Now it's very rare. I hardly ever see a syphilis case. Um, Lyme disease, Chris Christopherson had that. They initially thought he had Alzheimer's. That's an interesting one. You can look that up if you're curious. Uh, West Nile virus, mad cow disease. There's a lot of talk about that you know, 15, 20 years ago, but hardly ever does one see it. Jakob Kreutzfeldt disease is sort of the uh, similar version of that, not as uh, exciting or as often talked about. Autoimmune limbic encephalitis, that's like that book, Brain on Fire. Um, hardly ever see that. Um, and that's not, that sometimes can be more acute as well. I have seen that a couple times, but it's uncommon. Perineoplastic encephalitis, when they've got a cancer and they manifest with uh, cerebral symptoms, it's really, really, really rare. Uh, sometimes the patient will have a normal brain, and that means the brain's not necessarily the problem, or we can't see it on MRI. And what could it be? Sometimes an old person is just depressed. They're not really, nothing so bad wrong with them. They're just depressed. Some people have a low baseline IQ, and a relatively minor uh, type of injury can sort of tip them into cognitive impairment. They don't have much cognitive reserve. Hypothyroidism, of course. Check for B12 deficiency. There's been some cases of B12 deficiency where the patients have made dramatic recoveries um, once they've received B12. So that's something to always check and consider supplementing. And what's the normal level is actually higher than is widely thought. Thiamine deficiency, sure, rare. Folate deficiency, sure, rare. Iron overload, usually not going to cause cognitive impairment, but can contribute to it. Leaky gut, leaky gums, autoimmune diseases, all that stuff, super, super rare that it's going to cause cognitive impairment and in an unclear way. Some of these heavy metal toxicities tend to gradually contribute to um, cognitive impairment. Um, I think that's actually under-recognized, and that's a topic for a later day. Autonomic hypotension causing decreased cerebral perfusion. That can happen, rare, but I have seen that. Medication side effects, I think that's more common than is widely realized, and that's a whole big topic. So if anybody's cognitively impaired, I would go through all their meds and see if it's potentially due to that. Um, up and coming causes of cognitive impairment, you know, of course, the vaping, like smoking cigarettes, 
MGA, THC, that stuff is bad for the brain, okay? <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Uh, opioids, unfortunately, I see a significant number of that. I've seen a lot of patients have strokes from opioids. They become hypoxic. Potentially, they had an episode of being comatose. They don't, from respiratory failure, and they don't uh, get enough oxygen to their brains. I've seen that. Um, I've seen that surprisingly often. Um, obstructive sleep apnea. We talked about that before. They're hypoxic at night, not getting enough oxygen to their brain neurons. Multifactorial causes. This is actually where I think lots of people are uh, developing cognitive impairment. And I've talked about this a little bit before. I have a lecture on excitotoxicity, and that's a big topic. I actually think that is super common. Um, and so what that means is a whole bunch of minor problems for the brain, typically decreasing the blood supply while ramping up the metabolic demand, leading to the neurons undersupplied with oxygen and glucose, and then the neurons go into this program of death, you know, apoptosis. That is really common, but it's not widely known, and I'm actually putting together a better lecture on that. I made a lecture before, but I'm going to go into more aspects of it in the future because it's a fascinating subject. Okay, um, and also, people aren't looking. You sort of see what you look for. And I think over time, you know, persons taking care of people with cognitive impairment should look more carefully for what is their dietary history, their heavy metal exposure history, their occupational history, um, the level of water filtration. All of these things um, contribute to whether or not a person has good or poor cognitive function. So anyways, just to give you an overview, and then what was the big point of this lecture? The really main things to focus on is avoiding diabetes, hypertension, and toxic exposures because that's what's really making most people demented, the vast, vast, vast majority of them, and those are preventable.